we bring in Elliot Friedman. Uh, Elliot, you know, I asked these guys yeah. what their initial thoughts were. Were you surprised that the move was made when it was? Uh, not so much. There were some inklings over the past couple of days that something might be breaking in St. Louis. Uh, there's no question when you listen to Doug Armstrong today, he definitely talked about the results over the past three games. And there definitely was a feeling that things weren't going very well in, in St. Louis this year. And maybe it could be coming. I didn't know if I really saw it occurring last night, but I definitely think there was a possibility that the Blues were considering some things. So, um, you know, don't forget, there were a lot of rumors about Barube last year, too. And I think one of the things I'd kind of been hearing was, you know, Craig Barube is a great motivator. He really is. When they won the Stanley Cup that year, the players there talked about how great Barube was at pushing them and challenging them in key moments. And I think sometimes, you know, he's been there almost five years. Sometimes I think when that happens that it's tough to keep the message going. And uh, one of the things I did hear today from people who like Barube too was that they wondered if the, if the overall message there was getting stale and it was just time. Do you think part of this, Elliot, is about trying to get someone like Jordan Cairo going? Uh, I mean, they, they brought him in as a young player. He played well. They gave him a big contract, and it's kind of been a lot of up and down with Jordan Cairo, and it doesn't seem like he's responded. Is it about getting some guys like Cairo and maybe a few others going? You know, actually, I have to tell you, EJ, Cairo was the first guy I thought of, uh, absolutely, after the change was made. That was the... That was the first thing I thought about. Like, obviously, the Blues have made a huge commitment to Cairo. He's on an eight-year deal at a big number. And you you need him to be a cornerstone of yours. And, um, you know, Barube is a guy who pushed Cairo hard. I, I don't have a problem with that. I think we all need to be pushed hard to be successful. But, you know, you wonder, are they a working pair? And, uh, you know, last night there was a big play at the end of the game or late in the game where Cairo made a giveaway. And I could just see like a coach like Barube obviously having a huge problem with that. Any coach would. But, you know, I, I do think that that's one of the things that the Blues were considering. Is there a different message that need, that's needed to get Cairo to the level we need him at? And uh, it was the first player I thought of. Absolutely. Hey, Elliot. Uh... A quick question. Do you think, um, uh, okay, that this interim job is for the rest of this year, or are they mm -hmm. going to be looking for somebody during the course of the year, uh, depending on how they do from now on? Just a quick question. Yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> do, do you have any reason for asking this particular question? If I didn't know uh, you so well, I wouldn't have asked you that question. Yeah. It's well, actually going to be what? a two-man show the rest yeah, of the yeah, night. Yeah. First of all, you know, Bruce, uh, first of all, I, I give you credit for even asking it because that's a tough spot for you to be in. So I didn't I put it this way. EJ, you got to take one for the team next time. you got to ask it so Bruce yeah, doesn't okay. have to. Okay, I got you. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, I, I would say this. I listened to the press conference day, uh, with uh, Doug Armstrong strong and he was specifically asked that question and he said no he was not guaranteeing that drew banister was going to be the coach for the rest of the year now i think the contract might be set up that way i know that when somebody is brought on an interim basis especially when they're brought from another team you know sometimes you look at it and say okay we'll give you a contract for the rest of the season but doug armstrong went out of his way to say that wasn't guaranteed now one thing i think here is that um, you know, Bannister gets the advantage of going in there. He knows the organization. The organization knows him. And you guys talked about the good results Minnesota and, and Edmonton had after they made their coaching changes. He gets the advantage of hitting the ground. If he does well, obviously that, that improves his chances. But my impression listening to Doug Armstrong today, and this is my impression, is that he has people he wants to talk to. He has specific people he wants to talk to. And so he said, I'm not going to be updating the coaching search. I'm not going to be telling everybody who I'm talking to. But by the fact that he said didn't he said today it wasn't necessarily Bannister's job for the rest of the year, he wants to talk to someone. So I, I think other candidates uh, will get spoken to. And, you know, one guy I wonder about, in addition to anybody who might be at the desk right now, you know, Ken Holland and, and Jim Nill and Doug Armstrong are tight. And uh, Ken Holland had Jay Woodcroft before, and so did Jim Neal. And I wonder if he's someone that St. Louis is going to want to talk to. You know, Elliot, you were talking about the Doug Armstrong press conference. Something else he said, and to me, I read it as, you know, kind of putting some of it on himself, was 
if I if something happened to me today, I don't feel like I've left this organization in a better spot than I found it. So mm -hmm. assuming they don't get a bump here and the season continues to middle along, could this be the first domino to fall? Do you see other personnel changes in the offing? Um, to put it this way, I've always believed that Armstrong is pretty fearless. I, I don't think he's afraid to do anything once he puts his mind to it. Last year, he tried, yes. Um, he wasn't able to do it. Uh, don't forget also last summer that they had a deal with Philadelphia where the key pieces were Tory Krug and Travis Sanheim, and Krug uh, refused to waive his no trade, as is his right. And he's actually played pretty well this year, I thought. So I do think he has tried. I think he will continue to try. He did try to move Jacob Verana before he put him on waivers today or yesterday, which he cleared today. So I definitely think he is out there. Like, you know, he basically said, look, I don't think he's trading Rob Thomas. I don't think he's trading Colton Pareko. I think there's a few guys in his team that he's not going to move. But if you, but I refuse to believe he's not trying some other things. And if it doesn't change, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he does. All right, Elliot, before we let you go, I will take one for the team here. I know we're all wondering, what's going on with the hair today? I mean, were you in the wind? What's going on? Were you driving <laughs> in a really, convertible? Is it, is what's it, happening? Is it, is it really that bad? No, I, I've, been, <laughs> I, I've, been, I, I've been writing all day, so this is what happens. That's what I, happens, what right? You're like dug in. Write, I guess. You're dug yes. in. You're writing. You're putting your hands through your hair. You're wondering what's going to be next, what the next thought is going to be. Was he in New York you know, last night? No. Uh, no, I, I, oh. no, I have to say, like, it's looked so different so many times over the past <laughs> few years. I, I no longer know what's good and what's bad, so I'm sorry if it's really bad. Hey, I, I love it, personally. Hey, listen, listen, I love it. It's the information. It's the substance that counts. Yes. And you yes. always bring a lot of substance. So right. Thank you.